Here we go. We have Vince. It worked. Vince, you got to help us out of here. So Vince is a licensed marriage. Vince Redmond is a uh, licensed marriage and family counselor. He is that unicorn thing that not only is he an LMFT, but for a lot of years, he started out as a, a behavior technician. And he's actually featured in the film Recovered. You can see what Vince looked like when he was just a 19-year-old pup being a BT. And then, look, this is what some of your BTs grow up to be. I was in my 20s. <laughs> were you? Well, you were amazing. You were a gift to the families that you were working with. But I bring this up because um, Vince has that whole wealth of knowledge. He still works in the field of autism and supports kiddos as uh, and teens as supervisor. But he also is a licensed marriage and family therapist. So he, better than anybody else I know, has the capability to help us to deal with the feelings that come up in and around ABA. So we introduced the topic and we talked a little bit about the frustrations that can come when you can't access it. Um, Vince, help us out. What do we do with those feelings of guilt and loss of control and fear and anger? And I think, yeah, and I think especially right now, there's a lot going on in, in our communities, our regions, our counties and, and the such that are, you know, in our, and I know for us, for our nation, is you know actually restricting you know the access to to treatment so you know as i was listening to you to go through that he's talking about you know what what happens when everyone's saying this is what you need to do and you can't get it and i think mm. that's the biggest frustration that i wish i had the magic you know the magic answer for for everybody because i know the need is far greater than what the needs are especially right now coming out of the pandemic um, you know, my, my first thing, is, you know, just to answer your question, Shannon, what do we do with the frustration, the anger, the feelings? I think the first thing we want to know is acknowledge them. Why are we upset? Are we upset because we don't want to do this? Or are we upset? Are we frustrated because there's a lack of, of uh, experience or knowledge and, and uh, resources within our area? Are we upset because we have found an agency, we have found people, however, there's waiting lists, they don't, you know, they don't have BTs or, or supervisors, or maybe they're just inundated, or, you know. Um, so the first thing is really identifying where our feelings are coming from, right? Because some of them I, I'm going to, I'm going to guess are residual grief and bereavement, right? Um, on the diagnosis itself, then, so are you talking about residual grief on the diagnosis itself? Correct. Correct. And I think because the more we're faced on dealing with it, right, we, we then have some feelings of, of grief. We have some feelings of anger. We still have those feelings of disappointment that are coming up, even though we're taking that first step to actually getting services, getting help, getting what needs to be done, right? So as we're dealing with our own grief and we're dealing with our own bereavements, right, now we're facing barriers to to actually access what the professionals are asking us to access so a lot of families are feeling in that catch-22 they're still bereaving from the diagnosis and a little bit of 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 those emotions those raw emotions those angers those disappointments that sadness and now we're being met with the frustration and the in the confusion of how do we access the services that are actually being recommended so being able to identify that in ourselves, I think, is our first step. That will help guide us on what do we do next, right? We care for ourselves and our own bereavements. We 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 take uh, um, ownership and recognition and, and acceptance of our own feelings in bereaving, and then we also look at okay, now how do we work with getting work with our insurance, work with our agencies, work with our you know uh, uh, advocates and community resources to try to get services that the you know that each child needs so that's the first step um now i know I'm, i guess i'll just keep i'll keep going because i know one can i bring up one thing though yeah, um no, i just because i that just really resonated what you said with me vince and and i think a lot of times when we come into this community and there is all that grief we can get stuck in it but i just want to plug nancy did a series for us a, a few years back that's called empowering parents 
And that playlist is available on our YouTube channel where you can just go and watch those all the way through because I think Nancy will give you a little boost in your keister that will help you to like put your shoulders back and be like, I can do this. And, you know, I, I happen to love the band U2. And I, just the other day, uh, I was listening to Bono talk about their new record, which is the title of it is We Are the People We Have Been Waiting For. And that has just been resonating with me that, yes, we talk about all the time here on the show that it's great when you can have support. We wish all of you can be with a great quality ABA provider and that you have a really qualified BCBA working on your team. But whether you have that or you don't, we I think we can all agree, all three of us, that one of the strongest components of any child or teenager or adults program is uh, the, the person who, the caregiver. And, and that if you will remember that you are a large part of this part of this equation, you are the person you've been waiting for. Listen right. to Nancy, and it'll be clear to you that you can do this. Now, I you, Shannon, I want to just give a plug for a book that was a new resource for me. It's called Reality Slap, Finding Peace. Russ in Harris. The You're Russ Harris, When Life Hurts. It's got positive affirmations and positive thinking. Um, it's helped me. I bought that book because I've had to deal with a lot of feelings of grief and uh, disappointment about why getting therapy late. Um, and for many years, I tortured myself. And it's really helped me come to more of a place of acceptance. So for those of you Good. that are not able to, you know, and, you know, and, and thank you, Nancy, because we've been plugging that book from the beginning of time when Evelyn Gould was a regular on this show. That's that book is the, the basis of using ACT, Acceptance Commitment Therapy in ABA. And, you know, Evelyn uh, left us to go get her Ph.D. in that and did a seminal study in that and how effective it is in treating uh, caregivers of kids on the spectrum. So great book. And it just so happens that Russ Harris is a parent of an individual on the spectrum. So he's writing it from a place that we can all, I think, resonate with um, and, and act a much more accepted modality as, you know, Vince can probably talk about much more eloquently than anybody, but great book. Thanks for referencing that. And I'm glad to hear that it helped you. So Vince, we sidetracked you for a second, but I just, I thought what you were saying was so powerful. I wanted to make sure that we address that, you know, the, we do have resources to empower a parent. Um, please watch Nancy's thing and, and please check out Reality Slap. Well, I think this kind of is a good segue into what are some of the other, we're getting forced right now to really rely and really look at what are the other resources we can use while we're waiting or while we're in the, asses you know, in the assessment stages for ABA. Right. There's lots of different reasons and we can talk, maybe, you know, maybe talk about a, a few of them of why I, the, re, the right now, the biggest concern that I hear from families is why are there not enough staff? Why is there not enough mm -hmm. supervisors? Why are there not enough PTs? Why, why, you know, it's immediately assumed that CARD or other agencies, you know, aren't applying better wages, better benefits, better incentives, those types of things, preferred scheduling. And it's not that, it's not that at all. And we've, <laughs> I know we've done that. I'm actually very close friends with many other, uh, you know, owners of other ABA organizations. Typically they spawn from CARD at some point in time. Um, so, you know, I know, I know them and they experience the same thing. So this really now leads us to um, what do we do in the meantime? Right. I mean, we can talk of the reasons why, but I think more importantly for our listeners is what do we do in the meantime? Don't stop. Stay on the wait list. Make sure we're going through the assessments. Turn your assessments in. It There will be a coming. Right. As soon as some of the things change in government and government supports, those BTs will be back at work when they're back at school. Um, but right now, what are some of the, those support groups the the books you know like we were just talking with reality slaps what are some of the other you know skills like being able to do some of the the programs on your own at home learning how to be uh or, or learning a little bit more about uh, to, you know autism and you know um, um the you know the, the research behind uh aba what are some of the you know uh, uh 
I'm just trying to think off the top of my head, you know, other supportive services that we can, that your child's going to need, speech services, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and the such. The, just because we can't get into AB right now doesn't mean the rest of the resources have stopped. So my, my biggest um, recommendation for families is if ABA, if you're not available to ABA right now, continue to pursue it, continue to make sure it's coming. However, be well read, look at the, you know, meet with other families, meet with other uh, individuals who either have services or have children that have autism um, and the such. Um, you know, we also want to make sure that that we're looking at um, you know, uh, uh, what other services are being recommended at this time? Is it, do they need speech therapy? Do they need physical therapy, occupational? Like invest in that. Get them going in that. Make sure that those developmental areas are being addressed and worked on. Make sure that, like I said, make sure that we're increasing our knowledge, parent training, parent, you know, involvement. What what can I do as a parent to better understand this? All of this is going to benefit you once ABA starts, right? So not only it's benefiting your child right now, as your child is receiving direct intervention of, of a type or of a source, right? It's also gonna benefit you because ABA will then come in and melt or melt all that together into a nice comprehensive program for you. I love Can't that. You, sorry, Shannon. No, you go right ahead. Uh, since you talk about uh, prep time and doing as much as you can, it's also a time that you can get everybody on board. And we did have a comment from Christina about lack of help from her partner. I, she wrote it in, so hopefully she doesn't mind me saying that. Um, the, her husband is no help with their son. And some people have caregivers as well that uh, come in. So this is a time that everybody should be brought on board, right, Grant Vince? Absolutely. And I think it's also time to really explore our funding sources and what services and supports that they can give you, right? I mean, insurance can do much more than just ABA. They have other resources and groups and things that they can support. Your local, you know, uh, school districts have a list of different resources and supports that they can help your family with. Um, you know, different, you know, I know it's different per state and per area, but, you know, the things like regional centers or mental, you know, uh, uh, county mental health programs, they too have resources that can assist you. We have Autism Speaks. We have, you know, the Autism Society of America. We have TACA. We, you know, lots of, you know, lots of very, you know, nationally known um, networks that have a ton of support and resources for families. Invest in those, invest time in looking at those, invest time in those resources. They are there for you, they are fabulous, they're wonderful, and they do continue to prep you you know, as you head towards your APA. Yeah, program. TACA, TACA is a great resource because they have parent support groups where, uh, I don't know about you, Shannon, but I learned more about uh, therapy and uh, ways to recover my son through p other parents than through any other source. Yeah, absolutely. I think Taka has the most comprehensive site uh, for anything that you're looking for. Um, you know, I, honestly, I mean, you know, we have a site and we do videos and we've been doing them for 10 years. And I still, when people are looking for resources, I say, go, you know, look at our videos, but go to Taka. Uh, Taka has great resources and you'll get the opportunity to talk directly with other parents. I encourage people to join Taka. It's a very nominal fee per year. I think it's something like $27. And then you get the benefit of a free mentor, another parent who's walked through the whole thing and is, you know, fit to you so that you can have somebody to help. I know, I, I know we're running out of time here, um, Vince, and I love this topic, but I don't want to leave the conversation you know, we do have a dear friend of the show who's written in and said that this is a particularly rough time. I'm going to paraphrase and just saying, you know, Nancy was saying that, you know, she's not getting the help and support that she needs and she's recovering from a procedure. I, I, I just, I, you know, I wondered if we could just talk for a second, you guys, about, I think everybody's dealt with something of, of some thread like this where, you know, you need a little bit more help than you've needed before and somebody isn't picking up on the cues about that. Like, 
I, and I'd love to hear from you guys, but I, I just want to say every family is different and every individual is different. But for me, if I'm not getting the support that I need, what I find, you know, I, you know, some people it's like sit down and have a, a real serious pointed conversation with the individual. I find that doesn't work for me and my spouse. I write a letter because when I write the letter, I get to fix it. And if I say something that's inappropriate or caustic, I can edit and go back and rewrite it and do it. But I get to say everything that I needed to say about what I need and why I need it and why I'm counting on him to provide that. And I've got it concise and then I can give it to him and he can process it in his own way and come back to me with a response, but it's clear. Um, so that's what I do. If I'm, if my uh, partner is not uh, giving me what I need and I, and I, and I've failed at every other way of getting them to see it. I write a letter. Do you guys have, that's my method, but I'm sure there's 35 million methods. What do you guys recommend if the, if the other person in the relationship isn't helping and you need the help and you need it now? I think that's great. I think that's actually a very, a very good idea, especially if you and your spouse understand that this is meant to be a communication, you know, pathway for each other. It's not, uh, 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 you know, hiding behind the computer. Or it's not that, you know, we can't, you know, sit face to face. This is just a conduit to communication that hopefully leads to more face to face understanding. Now, with that said, I think the other thing that I see a lot with couples in, in, in regards to communication for whatever reason, and I think right now we're talking about being able to support one another with parenting, is a lot of times that's indi indicative that we're not spending enough time together. We're not spending enough time in each other's world to be able to have these conversations, to be able to understand the, the depth of of you know need that one or both parents may need so my first my first recommendation would be is to look at what time we're spending together and try to increase it you know is it just passing chips in the night is it just same old night routines uh coming home it's six seven o'clock eat dinner sit in front of the tv go to bed if that's the case we need to break that we need to increase time that we're going to be communicating in my in and i have to emphasize this distraction free no cell phones no tvs no you know uh, things that we're going to put in front of our face to block out what we're what we're actually trying to to accomplish and this turns into a great time together we have the the time is not just to sit there and meet with or, or to talk heavy stuff the idea is to increase the amount of time you are together. Sometimes we're talking about heavy stuff. Sometimes we're watching a movie together. Sometimes we're taking a walk with a dog. Sometimes we're eating, you know, uh, uh, we're having a dessert together. The idea is to dedicate a specific amount of time every night to just being with each other. That will increase the communication. That will increase your knowledge of your spouse. That will increase your understanding of where they are in their journey right now. And then your job is to support them in their journey. Their job is to support you in your journey. And then hopefully we get the, you know, we get each of us get what we need in the relationship again. Easier said than done, I guess is what I want to say there. I think that's really good advice. I'm I'm still not good at that. And Nancy, I know that you and Reed had one, you have, you guys had a stellar relationship, exemplary we did, relationship. But Shannon, I have to tell you that I got to a point, and I know Holly Robinson Pete talks about this with Rodney Pete. I basically said it's we're gonna be in this and we're gonna, you know, work with this child, or I'll do it on my own. Yeah. You either come and join me or I'm gonna do it myself. Now, I don't recommend that for everybody to say, you know, the, an ultimatum like that, but um, I had to get to that point. And then he got on board and we worked together. I think Vince's recommendation is a conciliatory, much better recommendation. But sometimes you do have to say, look, I'm at a breaking point here. And yeah. I need you to be, get on board. And don't forget to other resources of support like best friends and yes. parents. Absolutely. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you have to rely on them while you're waiting for the spouse to come around. 
Yeah, absolutely. You guys were out of time, but I just appreciate both of you so much. I want to thank both of you um, for being here with us. Vince, you're amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, and earlier. Well, and you know, it was our fault. We got something going on. I don't know what it is, uh, but we'll try to have that fixed before Monday. On Monday, it is the rescheduled show where we're having Millie Quinones Dunlap on with us. She is a pain, a U.S. certified pain specialist talking about how we deal with pain. Because we've had a lot of people writing in on and off the spectrum, caregivers and, and folks on the spectrum talking about pain. And it is a particular thing. Everybody's trying uh, really hard nowadays to address pain and not rely on things that become addictive. And so we're, that's what we're going to be talking about on Monday. She, you know, it sounds like a really serious subject, but she's one of the funniest people I know on the planet. So I'm excited to have her here uh, because I'm sure it will make it interesting and fascinating. Uh, so we're looking forward to that on Monday. So you'll want to stay tuned. Nancy, thank you so much for giving up part of your time in Big Bear to be with us. We just thank adore you. Thank you, Shannon. Love, love being here with you all. Check Nancy's Empowering Parents out on our YouTube channel. It is such a worthwhile uh, thing to go through. It, it won't take you long to go through it, but it's binge worthy. Let's say that. So again, we'll be back on Monday. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me. And yourselves a hug from me. Bye-bye for now. Bye, everybody. Bye, Ben. Take care.